Hi, I'm Mrs. Simons. I have your child this year in honors geometry. I am not able to make open house, so I am recording this short video to introduce myself, as well as talk about uh, the course materials, outline, and grading policy. Sent home at the, the first day of school was my course expectation sheet, which you all have read as I have received a sheet signed uh, from your child indicating that you and your child have both read and agreed to these expectations. But if you have not received this sheet, it is blue and please contact me. So let's start with materials. They need a graphing calculator, a compass, ruler, earbuds, and graph paper. Now the compass, I encourage all of my students to purchase their compass through the school store. It's a higher quality compass and it only costs $3. As well as um, their notebook and homework packet. So they receive a spiral bound notebook for both semesters. So semester one and semester two. Uh, you should see this at home when they're doing their homework assignments and feel free to look at it at any time to make sure they're taking good notes. And they also have a homework packet and it's blue. So you should be seeing them work on their homework at least every other night, if not every night, okay? And let's talk about the grading policy. In my class this year, I am not grading homework. So their formative assessments are 30%. Their summative assessments, 50%, and the quarterly assessments are 20%. The formative assessments are going to be given after every two days of notes. So I start each unit with a reading, then day one, day two, day three, so on and so forth. Quiz days will fall on all odd days. So this is day three, day five, day seven, depending on the length of the unit. The reading does not ever count in that sequence. For their quizzes and all assessments, they're gonna have access to scrap graph paper as well as the Regents reference sheet to use at all times. And to start every one of those exams, I encourage them to do a brain dump in which they write down all of their formulas that they may need for the unit. Each of those assessments needs to be finished within the class. Uh, for formative assessments, we usually do a brief review before they take their quiz. And the notes for that day are on a Chromebook uh, via video through my YouTube page, and I'll talk more about that uh, momentarily. So they have as much time as they need to complete the quiz, and when they're done with the quiz, they simply put the quiz to the corner of their desk, I'll pick it up, and they open up their Chromebook and start their notes. For the formative assessments or unit exams, that's, those are at the end of every unit, and we start on that right away. There's a bonus question on each unit test, which they are to save for last because it is a challenging question. And if they were to do that before the others, they may not have enough time to finish, okay? But that also needs to be finished within the 80 minute block. And then the quarterly assessments, those assessments are given at the end of each marking period or quarter. And with those assessments only, I give them a uh, five by eight index card ahead of time in which they can write down any formulas, definitions, theorems, postulates, anything that they wanna use on that assessment they can use, okay? Um, or they can put on that index card rather. So once again, formative assessments, 30%. Uh, the summative assessments, 50%, and the quarterly assessments, 20. Now this year, we're not counting homework assignments as part of their grade. We're not saying they're not important because they're very important. Math is like a language and you need to uh, speak it every day or practice every day in order to be proficient. So they still need to be doing the practice in order to perform on their perform well on their formative assessments. So I've already called home at this point uh, the parents of those students that did not do well on quiz number one. And when I handed that quiz back, I went around the room and I looked through their homework packet and made note of which assignments were and were not done. So if they're not doing well, and this is something we talked about in class, the, there's a strong correlation with doing their homework assignments. So if they didn't do their homework assignments, um, they didn't do well on the quiz for many of them. And that's not to say that they have to do their homework assignments in order to do well. Um, it's practicing as if, say, you were in a sport. Not all students need to do as much practice um, in order to do well on those assessments. So that will all depend on uh, skill level, okay? So and I would encourage students 
or encourage your child to do their homework assignment the day they have math, because with block scheduling, we have class every other day. And then therefore, if they have questions, and this was all outlined in my ex uh, expectation sheet, they can see me the following day with questions on their homework assignment. So again, they do the homework the night they have math, and then they seek help on that homework assignment the next day after school. And th this class does require um, a lot of responsibility on their part. Okay, they need to take uh, ownership of their own learning. They need to seek help when needed. And I encourage them to get together after school or in the library and form their study groups so that they're working with each other and helping each other and just talking about the math. Supports at school. Uh, I'm after school every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in my classroom from 3.30 until 4.05, so they can see me. We have peer tutors at the high school. We have paid tutors, so if you're interested in having a tutor work one-on-one -on -one with your child, please email me, and that's something we can set up. What you can do at home is to help your child create that, or set up a schedule create that environment where they're just focusing on their homework assignment. They're not doing their homework, say, while they're at a job or, you know, watching TV or listening to music. And some may be able to do that, but if they really uh, turn everything off and just focus on their studies, uh, that is a better environment for them. Um, I have all of my answer keys uh, as well as a link to my YouTube page in Google Classroom. So when they do their homework assignment, they can check all of their answers with those answer keys and feel free to use those answer keys if you wanna sit down and try to help them on any of those assignments. Once again, that's in Google Classroom and in order to get into Google Classroom, you'll have to have their password. And I think that's it. I think I've covered everything. I just wanna, um, just if there's at any point you want to contact me, so if you have any concerns, if I haven't contacted you already, please don't hesitate to contact me. Email is the best way to reach me. It, my schedule is very busy at school and I tend to get pulled during my planning times for meetings or helping students or other sorts of required activities and whatnot. So if you send me an email, I can always respond at six o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock at night, and the same goes for you. So I would try to, if you would like, contact me by phone, but email is the best way to reach me and don't hesitate at any point to contact me. I'm very excited to work with your child this year and uh, I think it's gonna be a great year. Thanks a lot for watching.